Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at a few more heresies and heretical views denounced by the Church, and this time, Gallicanism. There are a few different theories about how it came about, but there are some things that we know for sure. To start with, Gallicanism began in France, and primarily remained in France for quite some time. While it's sometimes said that Gallicanism was a response to Ultramontanism, the truth is that Ultramontanism is just a word used to describe the view that the Pope has religious authority over Christians in other nations, like France and Germany. Many of those in France had begun to view the Pope as some kind of alien foreign power trying to control them, and that's why they created Gallicanism. Gallicanism was the view that the authority of the local leaders, like kings or heads of state, over the Catholic Church was comparable to the authority of the Pope. In short, that the state got to decide what the Church said, just as much as the Pope did. Bishops and local state authorities would also use this same position to try to seize more power over the local parts of the Catholic Church. There were four big Gallicanist positions. First was the view that the Pope had no authority over rulers at all, couldn't compel a ruler to do anything, couldn't remove him from office, and couldn't absolve his subjects of their need to be loyal to him. Secondly, the Gallicans denied that the Pope had the authority to override anything contained in the Council of Constance, which, among other things, had tried to give supreme authority to the Council itself, starting up a sort of council-based or democratic understanding of church authority, which was completely against how things had been up to that point. Third, that the Pope's authority needed to be regulated according to rules and customs agreed upon by the Church, including, of course, the Gallicans. Finally, they believed that the Pope's decisions could be undone if the Church could agree to it. In short, the Gallicans sought to limit the authority of the Pope through leaders, through the teachings and customs of particular churches, and of course by requiring their permission in order for his teachings to be sound. Even today, this mistaken impression that councils and world leaders have more authority than the Pope is commonplace. But in reality, answering the question of who has the authority in the Catholic Church only requires a simpler answer to a simpler question. Jesus saith to them, But whom do you say that I am? Matthew sixteen fifteen. If Jesus is God... No human being should dare to presume that they can decide what his church does or teaches, unless Jesus has told them they can. To arrogate that kind of power to yourself is to invite the judgment of a much, much higher court. So, who did Jesus say would guide his church? And I say to thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew sixteen eighteen, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and thou being once converted, confirm thy brethren. Luke twenty two thirty two. He said these things to Peter, and it was the words of Peter at the council in Jerusalem that commanded immediate attention. There is no verse in the Bible in which Jesus offers authority over his church to Herod, Pilate, Caiaphas, or even other apostles like John, James, or Paul and therefore there is no reason to think that Jesus would approve of obvious attempts to seize teaching authority away from the person he appointed. It's no wonder that this is considered a heretical position. In the time since then, other movements like Fabronianism, Josephinism, and Anglicanism have attempted the same thing and have been just as wrong for trying to nationalize the Catholic Church, or otherwise make it subservient to the state. You get to decide whether or not you will follow Jesus, but you do not get to decide what following Jesus means. Next time, what's Mormonism? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.